Risk factors for ectasia have been well documented in the literature, which may be classified into two categories. Number one, low preoperative biomechanical properties of the patient's cornea. Number two, severe biomechanical weakening caused by the procedure. Randleman and co-workers developed the Ectasia Risk Score system based on a retrospective case study comparing the preoperative of stable versus ectatic LASIK cases. The score integrates the topographic pattern along with the clinical variables, level of refractive correction, central corneal thickness, residual stromal bed thickness, and the patient's age. Abnormal corneal topography was determined to be the major risk factor, but a combination of other parameters significantly improved the accuracy, which was validated by a second study. However, the 4-8% false negative rate and the 6-9% false positive rate expose the irrefutable need for improvements. The percentage of tissue altered introduced by Santiago and co-workers was found to be an important ectasia risk factor for cases with normal corneal topography. However, the biomechanical impact from surgery is more complex than PTA by itself being related to the region and number of lamella that are severed during the procedure. Interestingly, finite element simulations concur that a thicker flap induces higher biomechanical stress despite the same PTA. The SMILE procedure also has a different impact than LASIK or surface ablation as a stronger collagen from the anterior corneal stroma is spared. Along with central corneal thickness, placido disc-based corneal topography has a historical role for screening ectasia risks. Studies involving corneal topography have found a much higher incidence of keratoconus and related ectatic diseases among refractive surgery candidates. Interpretation of topographic data should consider keratometric magnitude, regularity, and in-between eye symmetry as described by Rubinowitz. However, high variability is found on the subjective interpretations of topographic maps, even by fellowship-trained refractive surgery specialists. Even though corneal topography is sensitive to detect mild atasia prior to other clinical signs, it is well established that very mild atasia may be present despite normal front curvature maps. This is the case of the fellow eye of patients with very asymmetric keratoconus which was referred by Kleist as form Bruce keratoconus, a term originally coined by Amsler in longitudinal studies involving photokeratoscopy. Corneal tomography enables calculations of curvature and elevation maps of both the front and back surfaces of the cornea, along with pechometric mapping. A profuse amount of information is generated, which may challenge the clinician when interpreting the data. Elevation maps need a reference geometric body, which typically is calculated as the best fit surface using different shapes such as a sphere or a toric ellipsoid for best fitting different zones of the cornea. Consistency is important for having reference parameters on normal versus diseased corneas. An enhanced elevation method was described by Balin. After calculating the standard best fit sphere for the central 8mm zone, a second enhanced best fit sphere is calculated for the same zone, excluding the 3.5 mm diameter zone centered at the thinnest corneal point. The difference map from the standard and the enhanced best fit sphere will exaggerate any protrusions within the excluded zone. Beyond thinnest corneal point and location, thickness distribution is described as the average thickness values in concentric annular circles with increasing diameters centered at the thinnest corneal point. These values and their percentage of increase from the thinnest are graphically presented as a mean value and as the 95% confidence intervals from a normal population. A pechometric progression index is calculated at each point of the cornea based on the increase in thickness from the thinnest point so that averages are calculated for every meridian. The Ambrosio's relational thickness values are calculated as the ratios of the thinnest value and the average of the pachymetric progressions at all meridians and the maximal meridian. The combination of corneal elevation and tomographic thickness evaluation is the basis for the Balin Ambrosio Enhanced Ectasia Display, available on the Pentacam. 
The standard deviation from normality towards ectasia is calculated for multiple parameters, which are combined into the final bad D using logistic regression analysis for optimizing detection of ectasia. Including subclinical cases is fundamental to train and to test such enhanced ectasia detection approaches. Eyes with no detectable abnormalities on topometric maps from patients with clinical keratoconus in the fellow eye have been used, but this group is not ideal as some cases may have true unilateral ectasia due to excessive ocular trauma such as eye rubbing. The closest to ideal are studies that involve cases that develop ectasia from cases with stable LASIK outcomes albeit the minimum follow-up after LASIK for determining stability may be debatable as late ectasia has been reported. Preoperative data from 60 post-LASIK ectasia cases was compared with 266 stable LASIK cases. In this study, the Randleman Ectasia Risk Score system only had a sensitivity of 52% and a specificity of 82% whereas the bad d was the most accurate individual tomographic parameter for detecting ectasia risk. Artificial intelligence techniques by the Brazilian study group of artificial intelligence and corneal analysis provided new parameters combining tomographic and clinical data. Age, which serves as a surrogate of biomechanical properties, plays a major role along with tomographic data. Percentage tissue altered and residual stromal bed thickness, both representing the impact from surgery, are considered in the combined parameters and decision tree approaches. The consensus inclusion of parameters was demonstrated to improve accuracy. An enhanced ectasia susceptibility score was developed, providing sensitivity values up to 100% and having a less than 5% false positivity rate. Ectasia occurs due to a process of chronic biomechanical failure of the corneal stroma, causing its inability to support itself to the unremitting stress placed upon it. While any cornea may undergo ectasia, stability or ectasia progression will be determined by the combination of the impact from the procedure itself and the preoperative innate biomechanical properties of the cornea. Direct biomechanical characterization of the cornea and segmental tomography with epithelial thickness mapping both are promising diagnostic modalities to further improve the characterization of ectasia susceptibility. This will further enhance safety and efficacy of refractive surgery. Thank you for your kind attention.